Yeah, in La Gloria at the Santa Maria Bull Ring. I'm here with a Fred Rank. Tell me, how did uh, you get into bullfighting? Uh, wh what's your background? I was raised in New Mexico and I went to a seminary in Santa Fe. Oh, really? A priest, and I was sent to Chihuahua University because mm -hmm. I spoke Basque. My mother was Basque. Oh, really? And I learned to speak Spanish, you know. So then I saw my first bullfight. That was in 1952. Okay. Then the Korean War, then I came back, and then I went to Mexico and started fighting bulls myself. Oh, so you were, you were a, a matador yourself? Noviero. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me, what's the, uh, what are the grades to becoming a uh, torero? Where, well, you start, uh, you know, as a, as a, you start as a semi-pro, but you've got to have so many fights to get your, your carnet, your card, you know, your association card. And, uh, and you just, if your name grows and, and they start writing big print about you, you're making it. But so many are, so many start and can't make it, you know. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. start. Just like the Americans, there's only been six since 1902. Well, that's actually the first one was from Marfa, Texas. Mm -hmm. His name was Harper Lee. And he fought back in, with Guyana and all the old old timers back in those years. This was a hundred years ago, you know. But David Rank, my son, was the sixth, and none since. That was in 1981 when he took his doctorate. So you actually get a doctorate in, in bullfighting? You get a doctorate and a PhD. Wow. You know, you have to confirm your, your, your alternative to, to get the PhD. And David's the only one of the six that did it in Mexico City. There was another one in the, in the mid or the late 60s, John Fulton, who did it in Seville and then Madrid. So the only two real full matadors in history are David Rank and John Ford. The red suit of lights is uh, the red and or vino and up the auto, you know, wine and gold is what the one, the one he wore in 1981 when he took his alternativa. Became the sixth American in history. And the blue one is, is the one that he wore when he did his confirmation and got his, his uh, PhD in Plaza Mexico, world's largest ring. This ranch, 17 years, but we used to live in Alamo and David went to school in Donna. Well, that poster. doing exactly the same, but you see something's wrong here. He's been wounded in the femoral artery, and every time his heart beats, that blood's spurting out all the way down his leg, and he has that determination in that Aztec face of his to kill that bull. And I was right there. Pepe Luis dedicated the bull, and David was still had his feet operated on when he was, I think he was nine, in, in El Paso. And Pepe Luis came over and, and dedicated the bull to him. And uh, he said, you can do anything in life you want to do because you know pain. And you're not supposed to say anything to him. And he's standing down in the ring dedicating the bull to David. He says, even be a matador. And he took Pepe back. <laughs> you know, he took him back, you know. And he said, yes, if you try hard enough. And ten years to the day later, he was standing with him in a callejon. David received his doctorate. Isn't that something? That's something. The, the fighting bull learns more in 20 to 25 minutes that he's in the ring than a normal Matero will learn in 20 years because you never learn everything. You know, there's 45 different characteristics in fighting bulls. And you, if, you, if you see, have seen them all, you've got to have been there a lot of years. He, see, he'll charge. I mean, he's in there alone. There you go. Father, he looks just like him, you know, a gray like that. We call it a cardinal, and that's just, that's really the bloodline, San Mateo. Well, most of them are cardinal; they're grays. Uh, you get a few reds, uh, you know, but gray and black. But he's a beautiful animal. The rank, who is one of the the very few American uh, bullfighters uh, in history, David Rank, with the nickname El Tejano, fought for years in uh, Mexico. Where have you fought, David? Pretty much all over Mexico, one end to the other. One end to the other. Yeah. You were. How long did you fight in Reynosa? I fought there starting in back in '77 all the way up till 2004 when I retired. Okay. And uh, show us if you would a little bit of cape work and uh, and tell us what the maneuvers are that you're doing. Well, this is a capote, and mainly this is the first part of the bull fight. You testing out the bull. You're doing the main. Veronica. And you do a series of Veronicas. And then you, what you do, 
call it Ramate, a finishing path to that cereal, to that sentence or whatever. They walk away and then you come back and continue on with the next step of the flight, whatever it might be. Okay. And uh, what got you interested in bullfighting? Well, I just uh, grew up a lot. You know, my whole life I was going to bullfights since I was a little kid. And uh, got to know the people and learn about it. And just started at a young age and I decided that's what I wanted to do. You know, with the backing help that I got from my family, I, we went after it. What would you say was your, your crowning grace? What's your, your greatest moment in, uh, in bullfighting? Retiring? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I had a lot of great, great memories. It taught me a lot about a lot of things. Being the youngest American to become a full matador, to a couple years later confirming in the world's largest bull ring is the only American to do that. Quite a few, and then remember those great fights in between that got you there. That blend in together to make one big great number. From the Santa Maria Bull Ring in La Gloria, Texas, this is Bill Rubino.